Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, IVMA members. Um, we are instituting a new monthly Zoom interview with an IVMA volunteer. And what a better way to start than with the IVMA president, Dr. Hillary Christner. I'm Lisa Purius, IVMA executive director, and I welcome you to this Zoom interview. Um, as we know, volunteers are a critical component of keeping the IVMA firing on all cylinders to provide incredible member value for our members. Um, as I said, we welcome Dr. Hillary Christner. Uh, she took over the role of IVMA president at the IVMA membership meeting in early February of 2021. She is the practice owner at LaGrange Veterinary Clinic in LaGrange, Indiana. So welcome, Dr. Christner. Hi, Lisa. Thanks. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks. So let's get started with an introduction about you. And I always like to ask people to tell us your story, tell us your journey and um, how that led you to veterinary medicine. So my journey started when I was really little because my dad is a veterinarian. So I started out in the practice with him, I can't remember a time I loved going on farm calls or just being in the clinic, doing whatever, probably. Not everybody loved how much time I spent there, but it was, you know, for me, it was really great start. Um, and then when I got more serious about, you know, yeah, this is really what I want to do. Um, I spent a lot of time working in the practice uh, spent more time riding in the truck, doing those kinds of things. And then with that, uh, then headed to Purdue um, and pursued my animal science degree, knowing that if I didn't go to vet school, I definitely wanted to be in the animal industry someplace uh, because it's just a passion for me to be around animals, taking care of animals and improving, um, you know, animal welfare, what we do with animals. So um, started at Purdue and then headed to Ross University in the Caribbean. Uh, really enjoyed that. It was great to be um, farther away, I guess, maybe from home. And then um, spent a year in Oklahoma at Oklahoma State mm -hmm. to finish up. And didn't really know if I was going to come back uh, to Indiana or not. But I came back and started working for my dad and you know, loved it again. I love my area. I love my community, uh, being part of this community. I'm a rural girl at heart, so it was a good fit for me. So I stayed and now I am the practice owner here. Wow, great. And you're raising your family there too as well, right? Yes. Yep. 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 You have a husband and a couple of kiddos? Yes, I do. Um, my husband, Tim, is a full-time firefighter and a contractor on the side. And then I have uh, two kids, a son, Kane is 13. We're all about soccer and basketball. Teenage years. And, yes. Mm -hmm. And then my daughter is nine and she is starting competition dance. So. Wow. Uh, Do they have any interest in veterinary medicine? Do you think? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not at this point. No, my son is very, uh, he rode with my dad mm -hmm. and he remembers a calf being delivered. And I think we'll forever be traumatized <laughs> by that experience. Poor child. Yeah. Um, I thought he'd love it. My daughter, maybe. She is an animal lover, mm -hmm. but has uh, also decided that the disgusting side might be just too disgusting. Yeah. So we'll see if she grows out of that. In yeah. Her old yeah. She's got years. a little time. Yeah. Yeah, she does. So what connected you to organized veterinary medicine? What, um, what calling did you feel to, to get involved? So I have to, uh, you can thank my dad <laughs> for that. Dad, we will. <laughs> uh, he saw the Power of 10 email, um, the first class that you sent out, and the description of that that program, you know, connecting with other veterinarians, working on uh, interpersonal relation skills, mm -hmm. all those kind of building things that sometimes maybe as you're in your first few years out that you're like, oh, do I really have time for that? Mm -hmm. um, he was just very encouraging. He's just said, I think that this looks like a good program. 
uh, something worth doing. And so I pursued it. And that was my start. I met you, of course, Lisa, which was wonderful. Um, and then a lot of other great people in our organization. You know, uh, Matt Cantrell was in that class, Aaron Smiley uh, were two of my cohorts in that class that have also kept me involved in organized veterinary medicine. And then from there, you know, just reaching out, the power of 10 helped me understand how important it is that we're involved. You know, the IVMA is controlling um, or helping influence what's going on in the state, keeping a pulse on what might affect us as veterinarians that we may not be as, you know, in touch with if we're not part of the IVMA. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, being involved in several different uh, task force. I don't know if we, did we call them task forces back then or were they just committees? Uh, both, yeah. <laughs> so I served on a couple of committees and again, through the power of 10 group reaching out, uh, served on a couple of committees that I felt like, you know, we were doing things, we're making changes. We are shaping veterinary medicine in the state of Indiana. And I just feel like that's so important to, be part of, you know, if you're not putting your voice out there, there's no way it's going to be heard. So uh, being involved that way just has been shown to me over and over how important it is and what a big part of being connected to other veterinarians in the state um, and what's going on around the state. Yeah, I think that you highlight a really important uh, benefit of belonging and, and, and being involved, and that is meeting other colleagues that maybe you would not normally have done, right? And yes. um, I've seen that every year in Power of 10, colleagues, new colleagues connect with each other that maybe weren't in their um, class in vet school, they not, aren't necessarily in their community, but yet they have a lot in common, right? And, and it really does allow you to um, develop a new cohort of contacts within IVMA. And um, I think that's something that's really, really good. And I hope a takeaway as a benefit for, for um, veterinarians to be involved, right? Yes, absolutely. It's even the reunion meetings have let me connect with some younger veterinarians. You know, I always think, oh, vet school was just, you know, not that long ago. But when I look at it, I have a 13-year-old child. Yeah. So obviously yeah. I've been graduated for a while. Yeah. And so meeting some of those younger veterinarians that have more recently graduated in the reunion meetings has also been a huge benefit, I think, just to me personally um, in my network and also makes the meetings that we go to more fun, yeah. um, makes being involved, you know, you're reconnecting with friends each time mm -hmm. and the more involved you are, the more that happens and just the more fun it becomes. Yeah. I think it makes your involvement, your connection to IVMA richer and um, more rewarding. I hope, you know, that's what we try to um, yes. promote here, uh, which kind of leads me to my next question is, what do you see as the vision for IVMA in 2021? Uh, we hopefully are on the back end of a pandemic and um, what our members have, you know, endured and really led the charge in, you know, protecting animal health in the last year. So where does that lead IVMA in the next year? Um, well, getting finished up with the pandemic, I feel like we're still kind of feeling that issue uh, from time to time and with things changing, you know, um, the mask ban being lifted, all of that, you know, obviously affects um, all of us mm -hmm. as we practice. So staying on top of that as we have and wrapping that up, um, continuing to stay on top of the inspects uh, information. You know, there's still legislation in the works for some of those things and reporting and making sure that the pharmacies are informed of you know, things like the fact that we are, we don't need a, a waiver. We're exempt from a waiver. You know, mm -hmm. all of that education piece is still a part of what we need to do, making sure that IVMA members are comfortable with that. And then moving forward with what does veterinary medicine look like in the future and how do we make our state the best state to practice in? Um, 
Dr. Smiley had started that uh, goal and I think it's a great vision. And so moving that vision forward and figuring out what makes that happen and working on getting the goals um, and metrics that we have set forth as both a task force and then uh, board approved steps to move forward are definitely at the forefront of what I'm looking forward to in 2021, just get moving forward and keeping us at the forefront of veterinary medicine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that um, leads to my next question is, what would you say to someone who might be interested in volunteering? Um, you know, we have these goals and task forces uh, that we'll be rolling out to members in, you know, in the coming weeks and there will be volunteer opportunities available. Um, so what would you say to someone who might be interested in, you know, dipping their toes and being involved and, and they feel like, no, maybe I don't have enough time or I, I don't have anything to contribute. What, what would you say to that? So first, everybody has something to, to contribute. Everyone's voice is important. Every, um, you know, opinion, I think if you have an opinion about it, uh, it should be heard. I think it's very important that we get opinions from all over the state and from everyone. Mm -hmm. I think to say, stay tuned because we will be announcing what those working group and ta those task forces coming up will be. Um, and each task force will have a description of what it involves and what what we're working on. So pick one that seems interesting to you and reach out and volunteer. Mm -hmm. As far as the time commitment, I am a working mom and we got soccer and basketball and dance and all these things going on. And I feel like one of the best things that IVMA has done is try to be flexible. You know, we have Zoom options. There are you know, some in-person meetings, although we haven't had any this year. Uh, there are options of ways to be involved that don't require that you spend hours or a day or um, that kind of thing all in you know, one spot, it's not a giant time suck. I think Lisa, you do a wonderful job of keeping these things concise and on task and not wasting anybody's time because you know we're all busy, you're busy. So it's reach out, look at something that you think is interesting and come join us, it's fun. Yeah, and there are micro volunteering opportunities as well, really small snippets of yep. different things you can do that would still be a huge help. You know, we're a small staff, so leveraging our volunteer talent the best way we can advances advances the profession and, and IBMA in Indiana. So thanks for sharing that message. I think it's important. As we wrap up, two more questions. Uh, what fun fact would you like to share with IVMA members about yourself that they might uh, not? Well, I like to travel and we, my husband and I, um, a year ago got to spend three weeks in Jordan it was amazing wow. if you, it is beautiful and the history over there, mm -hmm. it was just amazing. Definitely a trip that was once in a lifetime mm -hmm. um, and I would love to go back. Um, food was amazing, scenery was amazing. It was just pretty breathtaking trip. Wow, I hear it's beautiful. Uh, any parting words, uh, any last thoughts you'd like to share? I think that everyone should get involved. I think if you think that it's too much or there's not enough time in your day, that that is not true. I think that the micro volunteering and the other opportunities that Lisa puts out there are so important. And if you wanna be part of you know, big change and keeping our state on the leading edge of veterinary medicine, then come join us. Like I said, it's fun. It's a lot of fun and networking is great. <laughs> and no I have four dogs. No interview or phone calls complete with some uh, without some animal noise in the background. So it's all good. Well, thank you, Dr. Christner. Um, as we wrap up, you know, uh, re feel free to reach out to her at, or to me at any time. You can email president at invma.org or lisa at invma.org and we'd be happy to follow up and connect with you. So with that, thank you so much, Hillary. Take care. Bye.